Hi, I'm Jimmy Berry. I'm the lead developer behind Drupal's automated testing system, and I'm going to go over some of the new features you'll see in the 2.0 system. Uh, these are the, you know, visual user-facing features, not necessarily APIs and things like that. So the first thing, let's take a look at some of the new features on the Drupal.org site. Um, so first of all, we have the attachments uh, theming. So now you'll see that the test results and operations are all integrated into one table. Instead of them being two separate tables, the uh, test results being displayed below the file attachments. So it's all one table now, so it just gives it a better feel. Um, another change on the Drupal.org side is the retest links. Um, they now uh, function a bit differently. So before, um, the issue had to be marked as needs review or reviewed by the community and tested da -da -da, um, in order for the link to even display. Um, this is rather confusing to a lot of users and everything else like that. So what we did is we uh, changed it so the link always displays whenever the option is available. And now the system itself will go ahead and as you can see here by this uh, trail, um, the patch initially failed, it was marked as needs work, I clicked on the link, the system automatically changed it to needs review and added a comment uh, leaving kind of a log of who actually requested the test to be retested. So, um, so that's a lot more user friendly there. Um, another thing that uh, Drupal.org now is able to trigger testing on commits. So we actually will test uh, the Drupal head release, for example, every time a commit's made to it. Um, and we'll talk about some more of the implications of that in a bit. So now let's take a look at uh, when you click the view details link. Here we are at the uh, qa.drupal.org site. Um, so if you're not aware, we've changed the domain from testing.drupal.org to qa.drupal.org. Um, to reflect our goals with the system. So the first thing you may notice other than the change in the layout of the page um, and kind of the theming and stuff is the uh, list of steps here. Um, so this is provided to better help or to provide uh, some context of what the review uh, bot was doing and the order of, uh, of the things it does as well as some help for when an error occurs um, what exactly does it mean. So you'll see here this patch went ahead and um, it failed to apply. So you'll see that step 5 is highlighted in red, and there's a helpful hint right here, ensure that the patch applies to the latest checkout. Um, obviously it's quite simple, and depending on the step there will be um, more details or not. Um, we can also work on improving those if people still have issues with it, but I think that definitely provides us with a, uh, a good first step. Um, another thing that's different is the uh, actual order that the test bot reviews things um, has been changed so that all of the items that are really related to infrastructure and things like that are done first and then all the things specifically related to the patch or the code or whatever are done later. The reason for that being that if, um, as you can see here, these first three steps are those steps I referred to and they're boxed, meaning if anything fails in those first three steps it's most likely related to infrastructure in some way and not your actual patch or code. Um, there's no real UI that mentions that right now but you get the idea. Um, so another item that you'll see is this tab here from MySQL. Um, that's part of the new uh, the new idea of adding, being able to test multiple database environments, um, being able to test things like coder, uh, performance tests, coverage tests, etc. And then those would all be tabs across here. Um, so you'll, you'll see that in the near future, uh, but that's why this is here right now. Um, another thing you'll see that uh, assertions are now clickable. So if you go, if you go, here's a uh, an issue from Drupal.org that uh, the patch did not pass tests. It actually had three fails. So if we go look at its actual testing page here, we see that we can see in the list of steps here that um, it stopped on step nine, and it pops, it displays a little message that says um, that you should probably review it locally until you get to work, etc. Um, so if we go all the way down here to the actual failed test right here, you'll see that when we hover, our cursor changes to a, um, a pointer, and the row turns white. If we click it, then it expands, and you now see the actual detailed assertion uh, message that failed. Um, so that's really useful um, when you have issues where you can't actually recreate the test locally, or you just want a hint on exactly what went wrong so you know where to start looking before you even run the test locally. Um, so if we scroll down here, you see the other failed test. You can go ahead and click on that, and you'll see that the two um, assertion messages from it. Um, some other things that have been improved. That was the major one that everyone had requested. 
uh, status page. A lot of people had a, lo a hard time understanding it. Um, so you'll see here currently it automatically switches us to the capacity tab. If you click on Q, you'll notice that we have the Q is empty. That's why it does that. Um, so we do redesign these graphs. So you'll see here the uh, test clients uh, are enabled 3 out of 34. That means we have 3 out of the 34 clients that are in the system currently enabled. So you'll see here in the test clients list that 4 of those 34 clients are actually attempting to be um, enabled. Uh, it means they've been requested to be enabled. The other ones are f physically disabled. So um, you'll see here this is also a new feature of the system is that we actually test clients. So in addition to testing uh, branches on commit um, and patches, we also test clients themselves before they are actually allowed to um, test live patches. So you can see here that this client actually failed testing, which means it was automatically disabled. So when a, when a client is added to the system, it um, goes through these set of tests which run, run it against um, ensures that it will return all the error codes. So for example, uh, one of the tests that it runs is it gives it a patch that doesn't apply and ensures that the client returns that error code uh, properly. So it, it runs through all of them and does that. Um, this is The clients are retested every 24 hours to ensure that nothing um, odd has happened on the clients and they're all still functioning properly. So you can f see here that this client failed. It appeared that um, it failed when trying to detect a failing test. It had some issue with syntax, so that could be any reason anything wrong with the client and it has a different message that's more specific to client testing um, which should help uh, admins manage their clients better. Um, you also see here that these clients are enabled and idle. When they're reviewing it will say that and when you click on it these currently take you to the actual client tests themselves which um, passed whereas when they are um, reviewing things it will actually display or it will actually have a link to the actual test they're reviewing so you can kind of keep up with what the clients are doing um, it helps with managing things like that. Another thing you'll notice on the client pages is this client log tab. So you can see what the actual client has been doing other than the normal event log which is the log of this test itself. So you can see the patches that this client has been running, things like that. Um, and then if we look at the so if we look at the usage graph you'll see that it's also been changed a bit. It has a better description. So of the three clients that are enabled none of them are being used right now. Thus we have full full or we have nothing being used right now. So we're in the green in terms of we can take on a bunch of more patches. Um, you know, real basic graphs there. Uh, another page has been redesigned quite a bit is the statistics page. Um, you'll see that the numbers that were kind of displayed at the bottom and left side on the page have been merged into a table so they're all in one place. Um, the graph of the results is pretty much the same as it was before. Different messages but the same idea. you also notice here again we have the environment tabs. So these two graphs look identical right now, but obviously in the future when we have more environments, they'll vary. And then the summary tab would have a uh, uh, kind of a merging of all the test results together. Um, so that's something, once again, you'll see more of in the future. Um, and I guess another thing that we have, we'll just glance at the log right here. This is all using views now, so we can easily add on more uh, filtering and you know things like that. Um, you see the type, so this would be client, branch, or file. You can click on it, etc. Kind of keep up on where things are, what, what's been going on recently. And so we can see here that Drupal head was tested recently by one of the clients, and uh, or it's being tested by one of the clients. Um, and so another new feature of the system is that when Drupal head fails, all the patches related to Drupal head will automatically be postponed. So what this does is prevent the bot from going ahead and marking a whole bunch of patches as um, failing, even though it has nothing to do with the patch, it's purely because Drupal head's broken for whatever reason, a uh, bad commit or whatever. And then instead of requiring a, a person to actually go ahead and disable the bot, which there's usually some delay there before that actually occurs. Um, another thing then related to that is that when a commit is made that fixes head, it will automatically go ahead and mark all the tests uh, back as queued so that they'll actually be tested. Um, so, I mean, under the hood, there's been a ton of refactoring. The system is completely rewritten. It's uh, much better abstracted, and all the reviews are pluggable now, so we should be able to write reviews for, like I said before, Coder and all these things. Um, look forward to a lot of really exciting features. Um, so, I guess, kind of stay tuned. Thank you.